This is going to be a short GWiz tutorial that just shows you how to build a small Android project. So we're, we've got our Android Studio open and we are going to start a new Studio project. We're going to call it Delete Me, Del Me, something. Down here we have our domain, which we try to keep to a small number of components just because it grades directories, and so you could probably just do your EID here, but I've got Wichel and CS371M, it's going to place it somewhere, and we're not doing C++ or Kotlin in this class. Okay, everything we're going to be doing is phone and tablet. I'm not that concerned about uh, backwards compatibility, so API 19 is fine, 16 is fine, Anything up to 23, really, to me, is fine. And now here, there are a whole bunch of sort of prefab projects, and I encourage you to go check some of these out. Just choose them, build them, and run them and see what they look like. We are going to do a bunch of these in class and for homeworks, including uh, maps, login, master detail flow, so it's uh, it's educational to just check them out. For now, we're going to choose an empty activity. And it names our activity, main activity by default. What's an activity? We're going to talk about that. But it's basically something that controls the screen, <coughs> generates a layout file, and um, I'm actually going to keep this backwards compatibility checked for now, although you can uncheck it in your projects. All right, once we finish, uh, this Gradle kicks in. Gradle's the build system, and the build system is heavily involved in how the IDE displays your code. So it actually needs to build a bunch of your code in order just to display it. And that is uh, missized for our recording area. So we're going to pop this guy into the recording area screen and see what Android Studio has come up uh, with for us. So we have two sections. There's a source code section, and there's a little um, um, browser display. And uh, here we have the main uh, Java activity. We expand the imports. That's what that looks like. This R is a, a global variable that Cradle is building stuff to, to let us know about, so that's why that was red and now it's turned black. There's some other things that are interesting in here, drawables, where you put um, pictures and other drawable uh, resources. For some reason it doesn't want to show us that one. Oh, there we go. Um, and then layout is another one that's important. Values. There's values, you know, like things like colors, um, strings. These are uh, constants. And then down here is the build scripts, which hopefully you won't have to deal with too much. So here's our uh, here's our layout, and there there this is the blueprint view. This is the sort of screen view, and uh, this is design. So this is sort of uh, the GUI view. Um, I don't spend a lot of time in this view, but you know you can pull a button down and put that there. So that's exciting. I I uh, tend to use the text uh, most of all. So the text is this XML document that also explains how to render your uh, GUI display. <coughs> and so you can see we start with. This thing called a constraint layout, which uh, we'll talk about in class. Um, its width matches its parent, which is common, and its height matches its parent. Of course, its parent is the entire screen. This text view object um, uh, actually is as big as the content within it. So, uh, you know, if we write even more text, the uh, text view expands, and we make use of some auto complete here if we, we do text size we can make the text size a little bigger uh, android let's see text color 
Let's, uh, let's do the accent color. That's oh, red. Okay. Very exciting. This uh, constraint stuff we'll talk about later. But um, so that's our as our text view. This is our button. Um, okay, and and uh, you know here we can put some text in the button like press the button. Uh, and it's auto capsing it for us. Whatever the, these are all um, uh, options you you can do. And here there's there's some. Uh, this is an absolute layout which we're not going to do very much of. But I don't I don't quite want to get into um, constraints. Uh, pull a constraint down there. Okay, so now this is this constrains the bottom um, to the text view, and it gives it an absolute location in the x direction. So anyway, I don't want to get too bogged down in this stuff. The point is, there's some there's some layout uh, of how these things uh, interact. But the 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 thing I really want to get across here is, this is a description of your app and what it looks like on the screen. And in here we have these identifiers like text view and button, and we are going to interact with these um, UI elements in our code by using these identifiers. That's, that's super important. So let's go back to this piece of code and we're gonna say, um, you know, we want a button object and we want a text view object. And uh, this is this is asking us like, hey, when you say button, the GUI is saying, hey, when you say button, do you mean um, Android.widget.button? And if so, press um, uh, Alt Enter. Uh, no, no, there. Well, I mean, when it comes up, so yeah, there we go. So if you hit Alt Enter. Well, what happens? It actually puts this import statement up here. And if you manually put this import statement up here, it will uh, stop coloring this button because it knows what kind of button you're talking about. It needs to know the actual path to the button code. So the, the, we have a, a button and a text view um, member variable. This is uh, the callback that the framework will um, call for us once our app has initialized and we call our super class and then we do this thing set content view which not surprisingly sort of sets up the main screen and it sets it up to look like this activity main layout and this activity main layout is exactly this so once it does that we want to initialize our button uh, and here we're going to Call this awesome function find view by ID. <laughs> so, some background noise there. So uh, let's see, um, ID and it was called uh, we called a button, I think. So, and this is this is where the the rubber meets the road. This is where we are now in our code. We are referring to elements that were that were in our XML, and we're you know gonna sort of imbue them with life through the, through our code. So uh, this is called text view. Okay, and so what, what I'm telling the runtime is, you know, um, I have this identifier that's somewhere in this view and it's called button. And I have another identifier and it's in, in this view and it's, it's called text view. And of course the IDE knows about this XML file and that's why I was able to do all this autocomplete for me. Okay, and once I have um, a button, uh, once I have a, once I have a button, I can yep, I can set an on-click listener, um, uh, and uh, yeah. So, so not surprisingly, an on-click listener is um, a piece of code that's listening for a click. Inside, we're going to create a new object and pass it directly in here. And the object we're going to create is a view dot on-click listener, which is an object that has a single function called on-click, which is our callback. It gets past the view. And in here we are going to, let's, yeah, let's say in our text view, you know, button was pressed. Great. 
Is that good enough? I think that's good enough for now. So we go up here and we try to build our code. And this actually builds and deploys it. And it deploys it either to a real phone if it's connected um, or to a virtual phone. And you have to set this up separately. I'm not going to talk about how to set that up, but um, we've set up our virtual uh, Pixel 2. And you can see, like, you know, it, it takes, it can take a little while to initialize this virtual phone and get it running. And, um, and, and then to build the code and to load the code onto the virtual phone and all this, all this stuff is happening. Right over here. So you can admire all this awesome code. Uh, yeah, I think this is, this work. okay, so check it out. So the button showed up all the way over here. Um, let's rotate. Ooh. Um, and now the button's all the way over there. I don't know, I'll have to think about that a little bit in terms of uh, um, how we would actually want to lay this out, but uh, well, that's for a later class. So let's press the button. Look at this text, hello world, and more text. <gasps> button was pressed, great, yay, wow, this is so exciting. Keep pressing it and it's not that interesting. And then you can come down here and you can um, kill your running application. We can actually restart this thing, relaunch it, we copy it over uh, to, and it, it starts running again. Um, you know, we can even just like quit out here. I mean, you know, you can find it in your uh, applications and, and run it. Um, or you know, just run it from the ID and we press the button and the button was pressed. Okay, so that's a whirlwind tour of uh, Android Studio and building an app. We are going to get into lots more details about all this stuff in this course. So get out there and have some fun.